You can turn in your Bible to the book of John. John chapter 12 is where we're going to be here, where we're going to start out. Uh, one of the biggest thing, I'd say probably the biggest contention between the Trinity believers, Trinitarians, and those that believe in the Godhead, the biblical Godhead, not oneness or modalism or whatever else. Uh, we're not talking about that. We're talking about biblical Godhead believers here. Um, the biggest contention, and I guess you could even say it is a contention with those that are heretical into the oneness modalism type of deal, the big contention is, is Jesus the Father? That's going to be one of the big contentions there. Probably the biggest contention, the fighting, where most of the fighting is centered at. Is Jesus a separate person than the Father? That's what the Trinity believes. Is Jesus one God with three different modes? In other words, He would be the Father. He just manifests Himself as a Father sometimes, manifests Himself as the Son other times, and as the Holy Spirit other times. That's what oneness or modalism people believe, okay? But those that believe in the biblical Godhead say, well, Jesus Christ is the body, God the Father is the soul, and the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. These three are one. It's one being, one God, you see. So Jesus Christ, yes, He is separate from the Father in the sense that as the body is separate from the soul, sure. But they're part of one being, so Jesus Christ could claim to be both Son and Father at the same time because a body has a soul and a spirit. So Jesus could also claim to be the Spirit, one God. See? But uh, the Trinitarians, they get all upset when you try to say that Jesus Christ is the Father. They'll say, oh, how dare you? This is heretical and everything else. Jesus never claimed to be the Father. He never said that. Let's look at some scriptures today. Go to John chapter 12, verse 48 through 50 to get in context here what we're talking about. We have here, it says, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. Remember that. Who sent Jesus? The Father. Can we agree on that? Yes. The Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that His commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. No problem, right? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Right? But go up to verse 44. John chapter 12, verse 44. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, Jesus, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. Hmm. You say, okay, yeah, all right, sure. You, Jesus is connected to the Father and things there, and, and he's the one that sent you. So you're not just believing in Jesus, you're believing in the Father as well. But look at verse 45. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. Him that, he that seeth me, Jesus, seeth him that sent me. Who sent him? The Father. You see, but the Bible says no man hath seen God at any time. The invisible God, the Bible talks about that. Yeah, because the soul is invisible. But you see, Jesus Christ could stand there and Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And He can stand there and He say, I'm the express image of the Father. I am here. When you're looking at me, you're looking at my body, my soul, and my spirit. So when you look at Jesus Christ, you're looking at not only Him, you're looking at the Father and also the Holy Spirit. All three in one. So is it correct to say that Jesus is the Father? Yeah. Now, I realize, realize it's incorrect to say that Jesus is, you know, in the mode of, you know, he's God in the mode of Jesus or God in the mode of the Father or God in the mode of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's heretical. I agree with that. But when you're looking at Jesus Christ, you're looking at the Father. That's why he says about no man can pluck them out of my hand. In the next verse, no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. Why? Because the soul is inside the body. So it's the Son's hand and the Father's hand at the same time. Very clear scripture there. 
Yes, Jesus Christ is the Father in the sense that one God, body, soul, spirit, three in one. John chapter 13, verse 31. Therefore, when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. You say, well, that's just meaning that because Jesus was glorified, then, then he kind of brought that glory to the Father, the separate you know, person up there. The, I guess the Father is the first person of the Trinity, I guess, according to the Trinitarians. So Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, glorified the first person of the Trinity up there in heaven. You know, no, it doesn't work that way. Again, other scriptures talk about my soul, in whom my soul is well pleased. Talking about, you know, the Father there being the soul inside of Jesus. But look at uh, verse 32. If God be glorified in him, in Jesus in other words, God shall also glorify him, Jesus, in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. They're glorifying each other because they're one and the same being. Jesus Christ is walking around on the earth in a physical body that can feel pain and that gets tired and everything else. He took on flesh, you see. He's walking around in this body of flesh, but the soul inside of him is God the Father. That's why Jesus is claiming, I am, before Abraham was, I am. We'll see that here in a little while. He's using the title of God the Father. Why? Because he is God the Father. Not the body. The soul is the Father. You see? That's what's going on there. John chapter 14, verses 6 through 11. I've been over these verses many times, and the Trinitarians always have a fit about it, but that's okay. At least if they have a fit, I'm keeping them fit. You see, it kind of works out. I'm doing a community service here. <laughs> John chapter 14, verse 6 through 11. Jesus said, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, unless they're three separate persons, maybe you could find another way up, you know, you get up there to heaven and you have to look and, okay, oh, there's the Father over there and there's Jesus over there to talk to some other people and the Holy Spirit, he's some other place. No, the three are one, one being. If ye had known me, verse 7 here, if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Compare that to John chapter 12, verse 45. You've seen him. Well, the Bible says no man's seen God at any time, but you're seeing him by looking at Jesus Christ, because in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So it works out perfectly. But look at, look at his disciples' reaction here. Philip. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known the Father, Philip? Uh, no, he says, Hast thou not known me, Philip? There's no clear scripture saying that Jesus is the Father. Okay, can you read plain English? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. And they'll say, well, see, he's saying that, that he's in the Father too. So see, then he'd have to be the soul. And it's talking about fellowship there, right? It's talking about they're all one and the same being. That's why they have that fellowship. But some people can't get that because they're lost. John chapter 14, verse 15 through 18. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may, may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Holy Spirit, in other words. Whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. So the world can't see the Spirit of truth. You can't see the comforter. Right? So who would that be? Well, that's the Holy Spirit, obviously. Right? Keep reading. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, 
and shall be in you. Huh? The world can't see him, but you know him because he dwelleth with you. Look what Jesus says in verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. What do you mean you'll come to you? That you're standing there and we're talking to you, Lord. What? Huh? Jesus is standing there talking to him and he says, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. The Holy, you know, the Father's, I'm going to pray the Father and he'll send you the comforter. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. What's he talking about there? You see, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, I will come to you. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Three in one. He's the Father. He's the Holy Spirit. These three are one. I don't say, you know, um, someday my soul is going to be going to heaven and it's not really... It's not really me. It's just I don't really know who the soul is or whatever else. Or it's just kind of a, another person or whatever. I mean, does my soul have its own body, soul, spirit? Does my spirit have its own body, soul, and spirit? No. I'm made up of three. Body that you're looking at, soul inside, and the spirit inside that. John chapter 15, verse 23 through 25. He that hateth me hateth my father also. No, because they're, they're two different persons, right? No, they're one and the same. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. What? They've seen the father? Look what it's saying right there. They both, they ha have they both seen and and hated both me and my father. Talking about lost people. So not only did Jesus say it to his disciples, and Philip specifically, he says, you know, he that has seen me has seen the father. He's seen about lost people. They both seen and hated me and my father. So Trinitarian, please show me where God the father manifested himself physically. Because Jesus said that they saw him. It's not, well... They saw in, 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 in essence the, the, the unity of the... Oh, oh, just drop your philosophical nonsense, okay? They saw the Father according to the words of Jesus. Verse 25, But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Wait a second. They hated me without a cause? No, no. See, he was just talking about the Father and himself up in the verse right before that. Why would he go from two now to just a singular? They hated me without a cause. When he was talking about the Father and himself in the preceding verse. He mentions two, and then he says they hated me without a cause. Is Jesus the Father? Yeah. Well, I don't believe that. Then you're calling Jesus Christ a liar because he said he was. John chapter 16, verse 12 through 15. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine? And how is it that Jesus is called King of Kings and Lord of Lords? Well, no, they're different persons, you see. No, they're one and the same. Three parts of one being. Body, soul, spirit. One being. Very simple to understand that. Unless you're lost, then you can't ever get it. John chapter 17, verses 3 through 5. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Again, we saw that earlier about the thing of, they've you know, seen him who've, who sent Jesus. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. 
O now, and excuse me, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Wait a second there. Glorify thou me with thine own self. Hmm. They're one and the same, brethren. That's what's going on there. Go to John chapter 18, verse 4 through 8. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. I am that I am. It's the title of God back in the Old Testament. I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. I love this, verse 6. As soon then as he said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. First charismatic revival right there. And slayed in the spirit. Blam. You know, Jesus says, I am he. That's God the Father's title. And what did it do? It knocked all these people to the ground. Verse 7. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Hmm. So again, he uses it. He didn't say, oh, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have taken your title. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that I am he. I should have just said, I am like he. I am in fellowship with he. Um, or maybe you shouldn't even say I am at all. Just uh, I am the, or we are, uh, I am the son or something. You know. No, he's, I am he. Why? Because he is. He is the father. Jump down to verse 18. Of well, the same chapter, John chapter, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not looking at my notes correctly. Go back to John chapter 8. <laughs> Excuse me, John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 18 through 19. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. They said, they, Then said they unto him, Where is thy Father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my Father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. You see? It's right there. Plain as day. Jump down to verse uh, 23. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. He just got done saying there, well not just got done, but he said later on, chapters later in chapter 18, he says, I am he. Whom seek ye? We're seeking Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. Jesus didn't say, oh, I'm Jesus. This is Jesus speaking. He said, I am he. He told him earlier here in chapter 8, verse 24, If ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. You see the tie-in? He's calling himself by God the Father's title. Hmm. John chapter 8, verse 54 through 59. Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. The Trinity makes Jesus a liar. Absolutely does. Because he's not God the Father. He's a separate person. Something else. Verse 56, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Then the Jews said, well, that's okay. You're free to your own opinions and we respectfully disagree. And it... No. Then took they up stones to cast at him, and Jesus, but Jesus hid himself 
and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Hmm. Did Jesus Christ claim to be God the Father? Well, if you can read plain English, and if you're saved, yeah. He certainly did. And it's not God the Father in the way the, the oneness or modalists or whatever else that they say, well, he was, you know, God the Father somehow, and, and you know, and, and they get into all this messed up stuff. It's so simple. Body, soul, spirit. He's the body, the Son of God. The Father is the soul inside of the body. But also seated in heaven at the same time. Like the Bible says a Christian is. We're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. The Bible teaches that I am part of His body. How does that all work? Well, I don't know, but I know what the Bible says. You see? And the Holy Spirit's there too, as the Spirit. The Holy Ghost is there as the Spirit. I can say it that way as well. Watch out for these Trinitarians, brethren. They have a false god. Three of them, actually. It's a pagan system. And they have to add to the Scriptures. You cannot teach the Trinity without adding to the Scriptures. It is impossible. That's why this is the source. Because they, the, the number one sin of Roman Catholicism, like I've said before, is adding traditions to the Scriptures. And if you look at sacred teachings of the Catholic Church, which I'll be continuing to bring out as long as I live, they will tell you plainly that if the Scriptures say one thing and divine tradition says another, you go with the tradition. Right there. And they are the ones that came up with the whole thing of the word Trinity and all the other terminology of it, and they admit right here, and I've showed it in other studies, you can watch them, they admit that it was through philosophy that they got their uh, descriptions of the Trinity. There's no excuse for standing by the Trinity. None. You have no excuse for doing that as a Christian. So, uh, that's going to be it. Uh, I really do hope that people out there wake up to this whole thing before it's too late because this false pagan trinity is going to be there in the time of Jacob's trouble in the future. And if you're believing and militantly standing in this trinity right now, you are lost. Okay? You are seriously lost. And when the body of Christ leaves, you're going to fall for the lies and the trinity will show up on the earth as the beast, the false prophet, and the dragon. And those three are going to be there and you're going to worship them. Because you believe in the Trinity. Better think about that. Pray about it. Okay? Search the scriptures to see if those things are so. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.